Hey everyone, and welcome to my new Civilization 5 Brave New World series. So, this time I will be playing as the Maya, which is actually one of the stronger civilizations in the game. I will talk about the reason why I picked this particular civilization and about my plan for this game once I actually start. But my plan for this game is to go with the less standard opener, which is going to be harder to win on DT. So, in order to make up for the higher difficulty level, of a less standard and less optimal opener, I picked a stronger civilization. This is still going to be tough though. Anyway, I decided to play on Communitas map, which has nothing to do with the Communitas mod pack that I already did one game with. This is still unmodded Brave New World, other than Info Addict. In case you're not familiar with Communitas map template, it's a map that tries to balance gameplay and realism, and does a pretty good job at it. I will tweak some of the advanced settings, because I already played quite a few games with Communitas that were not on the channel, so I'm roughly familiar with this map. So the number one thing that I'm going to change are resources. Now, my experience with the Communitas map so far has been that it generates too many resources, I would say. So I'm going to change this to sparse. I also don't want any continents in this game, so I'll change Ocean Rifts to none. Other than that, I will also change sea level to high, because even though I don't want any oceans, I want to make sure I'll be able to play around with some ships and actually use them in this game. And I think that's it, actually. I'll keep the rest on default. Right. So, I'm playing on standard map size, I'm obviously playing on DT, and I'm using Epic Game Pace. Let's get started. I will talk about my plan for this game once I actually start. After years of strife at the hands of your neighboring rivals, you Alright, so, the reason the Mayans are so strong, there are two reasons actually. The first one is their unique building which is, in my opinion, one of the strongest unique buildings in the game, is a replacement for a shrine, and it gives you plus to faith and plus to science. So this is fantastic. And this is also one of the reasons I picked the Mayans as my civilization to go with the Piety opener that I plan to use, because my plan for this game is to use Piety opener instead of Tradition or Liberty. And one of the policies in Piety is... Which one was it? One of these. Yeah, that was the one? No, that was not the one. Which one was it? Come on. Oh, I think it was the opener, actually. Yes. Adopting piety allows you to build shrines and temples in half the usual time. So this is going to work really nicely with the pyramid, which is my unique building. And the second reason why the Mayans are so strong is their ability to get extra great people. Once you research theology, which is usually researched early because you need philosophy for the national college anyway. So once you research theology, you will get a great person for free every 394 years, which is the long calendar cycle. So that will make up for my lack of tradition or liberty opener. Obviously, I can't really do anything to replace the tradition opener, but this can be considered a replacement for the liberty opener for the Liberty Finisher, I mean, which is a free great person. So these are my reasons behind my civilization choice, to go with the Piety opener. It's not a very obvious choice if you think about Piety, but I think what I said about the pyramids combined with the Piety opener makes a lot of sense. At least it does for me, that was actually the number one reason. So, let's actually play. I'll get a scout, obviously. I'll change this... So, yeah, two food, change to production focus. And let's continue. This is a decent opening location. I like the wine. I might actually grab the extra culture from wine, was it? I forgot what it's called, but it's one of the pantheons that benefits from wine. Seems like a very good choice with this starting location. I have three wine tiles in range of my capital, and there's one more to the west. So that's fantastic. Let's grab the ruins. I want to get some culture as soon as possible. If I got culture from these ruins, that would be fantastic. Because I could get the Piety opener. Okay, I got pottery. Well, that's still useful, I suppose. So, next up, I'm going to need calendar, obviously. 
Let's get that next and explore. I need to find my neighbors. I hope I won't have any overly aggressive neighbor because I don't plan any super early wars. I need to set up for the rest of the game. So I won't really be able to declare war on like the first 100-150 turns. I still plan to go after my neighbors, but not super early like I did in my Morocco game for example. I took the first capital pretty early in that game. That's not the plan for this one. So that scout will be done in a few turns. Another ruin. Would be nice getting Freddy culture from this. I was hoping to get the Pite opener before I start building the pyramid in my capital. 90 gold. Yeah, that's still good, I'll take it. I'll probably just go for Monument first in Palenque. That sounds like a plan. And then I can get the pyramid after that. Obviously, I'm going to need my religion if I'm going to use the Pite opener. Because otherwise that kind of defeats the entire purpose of going for Pite. I need to take advantage of the reformation belief. That's probably going to be Jesuit education, but we'll see about that. The nice thing about piety, which is also a little bit random, depending on your luck, is that you can get a benefit of the second most popular religion. So depending on your luck and what the second most popular religion is, this can be fantastic or it can be completely worthless. You get a free random Pantheon belief bonus. Basically, that's pretty much what it does. No neighbors yet, which is actually a good thing right now. But this is a map with no oceans, so I should have some easy to reach neighbors. No one yet. Change this like so. No hammers, but I need the city to grow to population 4 as fast as possible. Now, the bad thing about the lack of tradition is that my borders will be slower to grow. That's also the problem with Liberty Opener, by the way. Your borders grow so slowly, so I might have to just buy a few tiles for gold. That's most likely going to be the case. Oh, this is not actually the end of the continent to the east. Okay, this is a nice choke point. If there's any AI to the east, I need to block this choke point. So let's find out. I want a city there anyway, regardless of AIs. Alright, here's the first Barbarian camp. Interesting map so far. I do quite like the Communitas map. It generates some really interesting maps. The main problem I had with it is that the default settings generate, at least in my opinion, too many resources. So on DT that can be a bit of a problem with the AIs. Because the AIs can take advantage of extra resources a lot better than a human player can when they start trading between each other. It can especially be a problem if the AIs are very peaceful towards each other. They just start trading all over the place and start signing mass research agreements, things like that. And with all the extra resources that they can have, that can be a problem. So that's why I picked sparse resources. Right, let's explore west. I will get rid of this barbarian camp eventually. I was hoping to get some city-state around here. But nope. Hmm. Maritime city-state. Not fantastic. That also means I can't really afford stealing a worker from them. I suppose I could. If I just keep my warrior over there. Pantheon founded. Alright. Plus two faith from quarries. Not a problem. I already know what Pantheon I'm going to pick. This is one of the rare cases where it's pretty obvious what Pantheon to go for. I only have 4 tiles with wine, but that's still pretty good. Actually 5. There's another wine to the west. And more wine to the east. Okay, so this is going to be fantastic. I have 7 tiles with wine, fairly close to my capital. Awesome. I just need to make sure I can actually settle these locations. But this is a pretty good opening. I like the desert over here, but I won't be going for Persia, that's for sure. Well, if I get my great engineer very early, I might decide to rush Persia with it, but there are no desert hills. 
and not a single oasis. So this is actually not a great location for Petra. The best way to take advantage of Petra is to have some desert hills and oasis. That is the best location for Petra. The more desert hills you have and the more oasis locations you have, the better Petra is. And I still need to decide whether I'm going to use my first great person for great scientist or great engineer. I'll decide based on how this game goes. These are both good choices. I'll either go for early academy, some kind of wonder that would give me a big advantage, or a manufactory. I actually had a plan, but I might change it, to use my first great person for a great engineer and build a manufactory to boost my production. And I might actually do exactly that. So, I'm going to need theology as soon as possible. I don't actually need anything else. I already have calendar. It would be nice getting animal husbandry to see horses on the map, but I can live without that for now. It's not really a big deal. I prefer to get theology as soon as possible. I don't even need mining yet. I'll skip that for now. So, writing next and then we'll decide later. Alright, monument is done. Now I'll get the pyramid. Unfortunately, I won't get the piety opener before I start building the pyramid here, but that's fine. And once I'm done with this, I'll go for either worker or settler. If I can steal a worker from Vancouver, I'll do that. There aren't any AIs nearby, so the city-state will not be protected by any AI. Which means it's safe to steal a worker, that's what I'm going to do. And yes, I did see the hand axe. Another pantheon. God of the open sky. That's fine, I'm not going for that one anyway. Oh, this is not actually the end of the continent either, alright. Fine. I still didn't find any AIs, which is actually kind of surprising. I hope I'll have someone nearby, because I need some trading partners. Alright, so, fight the opener. That will speed up the pyramid quite a bit, as you can see. So this is a great mix. In my opinion, the Mayans are one of the better civilizations to use with the Pythi opener, and one of the less obvious ones. Let's keep exploring. I'm staying close to Vancouver, because I still want to get that worker. Huh. Natural wonder. Do I want to settle around here? Maybe. Eight faith. That would be awesome with piety and my religion. I kind of want that wonder, but it's so far away from my capital. I'm not sure if that's such a smart idea to send my settler all the way over there. I'll explore the area around it. If there aren't any AIs nearby, I might actually grab that. It would be great for me with my strategy. So, population free. This goes... I guess this stays here now. I don't have that many good tiles around Palenque. Another Pantheon is gone. Plus 30% ranged combat strength for cities, that's fine. And there's a river right next to that. Yeah, that's a fantastic location for a city. With floodplains. With a quarry, with stone nearby. Yeah, this would be a great city. It could actually get an observatory, because this counts as a mountain, obviously, it is a mountain. Hmm. Yes, I seriously want this location for a city now. If there's no AI nearby, I might actually make this my second city. Which is a bit of a risky move. I usually don't settle my second city that far away from my capital. But this is such a great location for a city, I don't want to lose it. Let's have a look around. So, I need this to grow faster, but that's not going to happen for now. I would have to buy one of these tiles, which is perhaps a good idea. Four turns until border growth, but the border growth will be right here. I think I'll just have to build a worker myself. I can reset the tiles, or I can just redo these assignments myself. 18 turns. Yeah, that's not great. 18 turns is a little bit slow. 21 turns if I do it like this. 
Well, the city growth doesn't change. Stagnation. Yeah, I'm not too excited about this. I can't afford buying the worker, unfortunately. Alright, let's just grab that worker like this. But 21 turns is a lot. Maybe I'll find more ruins somewhere around here. I can still explore to the east. Why did I park my scout in Palenque? That makes no sense. Let's try the hill. Okay, that's my first neighbor. Great. He's going to steal this location for sure. Yeah, there's no way I can get this before he does. At least this seems incredibly unlikely. And would be an extremely risky move. Oh, great. Handax. Is there a barbarian camp right here? A new one? No, I'm not selling my embassy. Forget about it. Although, I know where his capital is, so I suppose I could sell an embassy. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will, actually. My economy should be fine in this game. So, here you go. And he's not a very aggressive AI, so... I don't mind him knowing where my capital is. And he's a little bit too far to be a threat anyway. I'm still thinking about this location though. If I send a settler here, that's going to be even more risky. Not just because I will be settling right next to his capital, but also because he might start a city right here before I arrive there with my settler. Hmm. I don't know, I need to think about this actually. I still want to steal a worker from Vancouver, so let's check them out. City-state quest for the barbarian camp. Well, that's not going to happen. At least I can't do that with the warrior. What do you think you're doing? Not the one city-state so far, which is not fantastic. He entered classical era already. But at least I have a trading partner. Down you go. There's a worker next to Vancouver, but if, if he's protecting the city, I won't really bother. No, he's not. Research. I think I'll just go straight for philosophy. Well, I could get some units. Actually, no, I can't build my unique unit without archery. Right, yes, I can. So I don't need archery. I don't really need mining right now. I can ignore animal husbandry for now. Well, actually, it would be nice getting a pasture right here. But that's only one pasture. I think that can wait. The plantations will be higher priority. Yeah, let's just go for theology as fast as possible. The faster the better. So I can start getting my great people. If I get a super early great person, I will almost definitely use him for great engineer to get a manufactory. That's a huge production boost, and that would help me massively in the early game. Alright, let's declare war on Vancouver real quick. Get that worker. And there we go. Alright. It was not protected by Harun, so I don't think that will piss him off. Let's have a look around. Give me some more natural wonders closer to my capital. I still don't know if I want to try grabbing that location or not. I won't really get my first settler until around 10... 60 probably. I can always buy a settler for gold after I sell my wine. We'll see. I'll finish that worker. Actually, I don't think I'm going to finish that worker. Yeah, I will. I'm going to need a second worker anyway. And I want my capital to grow to population 4 before I start building a settler. And I want that ruin. But I also don't want to lose my scout. Can't imagine why. Another ruin, awesome. Give me some technologies. Would be great getting philosophy from that, but that's not going to happen. At least that's incredibly unlikely. I need an escort for my worker. I wouldn't want to lose my worker to barbarians, that's for sure. So other than lack of trading partners, this is a pretty good opening. Plus one population. Okay, that's perfect. Now I can get started on that settler. My worker is almost there, so I can delay the second one. That was not wasted production, though. 
I got some production time towards that guy. Let's do it like this. That's 23 turns. 20 turns. That's the best I can do. 20 turns. And I'm still getting plus 6 gold per turn. Alright. So, what do I want first? Well, I don't need Mandate of Heaven just yet. Because I can't faith by anything. I guess I'll gr grab this. That gives me plus 1 faith. So now I should be getting plus 3 faith from the pyramid. Yep. Nice. So this is awesome. Combined with Piety Opener. But don't get me wrong, this game will still be easier with the tradition opener, most likely. This is not exactly what I wanted to do there, but whatever. I think there's some barbarian come somewhere around here, so I still want an escort. Let's grab that second ruin site. Hmm. Might be a good idea getting rid of this barbarian camp. But I'm so paranoid that some hand axe is going to steal my worker right there. I guess I can move into range. Oh, there's a hand axe right here. Right. He will probably attack my scout. I might actually lose that scout. I don't think I will. No, I won't. Okay, let's grab this. I'll keep my scout around there. Just for the flanking bonus. I'm not sure if I can beat a hand axe with one warrior and one scout. Probably not, actually. But I want to grab that ruin regardless. Plus 50 faith. Awesome. Okay, now I need to fortify. I might end up losing that warrior, but that's fine. I'll grab this plantation first because it's safer. I need some unit in Palenque just to protect this worker. There's a barbarian come to the west. Yeah, I need to back up. I'll just send my warrior back to Palenque. Same with my scout. Okay, so Pantheon. Where's the Pantheon that I wanted? I didn't use that Pantheon in a long time. Oh yeah, this one. Goddess of Festivals. Plus one culture and plus one faith for each wine and incense. And the nice thing about this Pantheon is that this is not plus one culture faith from the actual tile improvement. This is actually culture and faith from wine. Which is significantly better than, let's say, plus one culture from plantations. Because in order to get that plus one culture, you actually have to build plantations in the first place. And with this, I can get instant plus three culture and plus three faith. So that's what makes it really good. If you have several tiles with wine. So let's get started on plantations. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a city-state quest for this barbarian camp. And if I... Even if I get one from Vancouver, that's not going to be super helpful when I'm at, what, minus 50 with Vancouver? Minus 53 with Vancouver. They will be angry for a pretty long time. But hey, it was worth stealing a worker from them. Now, I still need to consider whether I want to try getting this location or not. That's such a fantastic location for a city, but it's a huge risk sending a settler all the way over here. Not only because Harun might settle this location, but also because this will probably piss him off. This is what, six tiles away from his actual capital city? Yeah, six tiles away from his capital. So, yeah, I'm not convinced. Especially when there are so many good locations for cities near my capital. I might want to settle a city on this exact tile, just to block the way. Well, I don't have to block the way. There aren't any other AIs around here. I need to think about my city locations in this game. I'm probably going to start a city right here on the river. Just to be able to get a garden in there. So that's going to be one location. There's one location over here. That's almost definitely going to be a city. And I can see a decent location here on the mountain. With an observatory. And the crab. But this is also one of the reasons why I kind of like Comunitas map. I rarely had a terrible opening with Comunitas. Actually, sometimes it's a bit too good even. Mostly in the context of AIs being able to take advantage of all the extra resources. And this is with sparse resources, consider that. I still have a lot of luxuries around here. I have more luxuries around here than in my previous game with Continent's map. 
So yeah. 11 more turns for that settler. That will take a while. So the next big decision is going to be where exactly to start my second city. I'll have to consider that very carefully. That's going to be one of the more important decisions in this game, I would say. And I'll also have to consider how many cities I want to start before I go for my national college. I still need to build a library in my capital, obviously. So, oh hi, warrior. Well, I'm glad I sent some unis to Palenque. So, I'm going to finish this part here and continue in next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.